Hiya fishy folks and happy Sunday fun day to you. Today, a long, super long fish room tour back from Japan. Uh, I got home yesterday about 5, 5.30. Uh, I left Japan Saturday morning around, I left the hotel around 6 a.m. and uh, got to my house Saturday at 5 p.m. on Saturday. Don't forget there's a 13 hour time difference. If you quickly do the math, it's about a 24 hour trip door to door. I was pretty darn tired because I don't sleep on the plane. But I got home, said hi to everyone. Of course, Lucas, my little guy, was uh, clung to me, just like the dogs were. And the older kids and my wife, eh, they could care less I was home. Uh, but uh, after I said hello and gave some souvenirs away, I came down to the fish room and then checked out and saw something incredible. I'm so excited. You guys are just going to have to wait and see what this special, special thing is for me. I'm very excited. I don't know if you can tell, I'm excited. So guys, go grab some snacks, maybe some nice chips or popcorn, a nice cold beverage of your choice. Get comfortable and stand by. All right, fishy folks, here we go. We're going to start on the top row. We have the all-male guppy tank. There's a... Um, Japanese koi, I'm sorry, yeah, American koi, black Moscow, uh, jade head cobras, Tanaka maple leaves. All the ma extra males that I have from my breeding projects, I leave in here. The tank is fantastic to look at because the males are spectacular, but really nothing going on in this tank. So let's move on to the tanks where there's some boom boom happening, if you know what I'm saying. American Purple Deltas from uh, Daniel Anderson. Uh, these are the purple delta guppies with a little bit of yellow in the tail and I've been really trying to breed these to get enough males to sell on the website. Um, every time I have a couple like, yeah, we're going to get ready to sell them, uh, somebody emails me and says, hey, can I buy a trio or something and then I don't really have enough. You know, I have three or four males in there and that's just <clears throat> not enough to sell on the website. So, yeah. These, this is the um, Steel Nebula or Nebula Steel Tank. You can see I have two really nice males in there. One of them was the breeder, one of them was born here. And uh, the colony is growing slowly but surely. So uh, this is probably the next project where I'm gonna take a female out, put her in her own tank, let her drop fry and let those fry grow up in that tank, just to uh, try to expedite their production, if you will. These are the half black reds. Now, I gotta be honest, there were a bunch of males and females in here when I left adults and I don't see any. And uh, to be honest, yesterday I did look, uh, I did poke around in there and I didn't see any. So I don't know what happened to them. I gotta do some more digging if you will, but. Here are the uh, uh, purple deltas. You can see there's lots of fry in there. Really not enough to sell on the website yet. Here's another, you know, strain I have where I get four or five and I make a comment like, hey, if you're interested, shoot me an email. And then I get, you know, 15 emails. Hey, I want them or something, so. Uh, Tanaka Maple Leafs, these guys, I'm just trying to regrow the colony. I know I owe uh, one of my customers, Steven, uh, at least one male. Uh, I sent him a trio and Maybe I'm a female, I gotta figure out. I sent them a trio and something, uh, they developed, after they fully developed, the sex was opposite of what we both thought they were. So I will just send him what I owe him. Not really uh, uh, a big deal for me. I apologize to him, but that's just good customer service. So half black guppies. Uh, looks like they were fry born while I was gone. That's nice. I gotta put some more, uh, some more moss and stuff in here because I didn't expect any fry because I didn't see any huge females, so. But that's good, we gotta grow this colony up so we can uh, start selling them again. Huh. Uh, Japanese blues, I saw these in Japan. And uh, yeah, looks like we got some culling to do in here. Some uh, not so pure ones, so we're gonna take care of those this week probably. Um, blue diamonds tank is filthy and but the colony is doing well the males look great the females look great uh, what's nice about these are they're a relatively inexpensive inexpensive fancy guppy to get into the hobby and the females 
usually have some nice yellow in the tail, so they look a little better than your typical standard female. You know what I'm saying? All right, these were Cobra Guppies. Uh, I think the strain has pretty much mudded out. So uh, the plan is to take what was in this tank and already what was in this tank, there's one guppy left, um, and put them in a the mutt tank and just let those become mutts because I uh, screwed it up. So nothing in this tank. These were the Jarwee Lazulis, which I lost the whole line. And I, uh, I have some fry coming from uh, a friend. And once I get those fry, I will start breeding again. These also were a strain that I sort of developed. They just kind of happened. Um, but I didn't really pay that much attention to and uh, sort of mudded out as well. So, I mean, you have that really nice yellow one, but nothing I can sell as a strain. So these will also become mutts. But you know, when you buy Michael's mutts, you get some pretty darn good looking guppies. All right, here is the one purple mosaic Dumbo ear sulfur head. You can see here in the back, she's ginormous. I don't see any fry. I'm beginning to wonder if there's a problem. Uh, her back is getting pretty bent from her ginormous tail, so not so sure this was a good purchase, but we're going to keep trying. Uh, now that I'm home, I'm going to power feed with uh, bloodworms and rapashi and try to get some pretty good spawning to, uh, to happen, especially before it gets cold. You know, it's the end of August, actually it's the middle of August now, so if, you know, they spawn say in August, it'll be September, October. It'll be probably the end of October before I can ship the the babies out. They'll be big enough to sex and ship out, you know? And then October is one of those months where, yeah, we're gonna ship, but we're gonna watch the weather. Same thing with November, but I would imagine December, I'm not gonna be shipping too much. So I know that was a little confusing, uh, but that's what it is. Here are the German half blacks. Uh, I have one pair left. I do have, yeah, I have one pair left. And uh, we're trying to get these bad boys to breed so I can start selling them again. I also owe a customer one of these. He's been super patient waiting for it. You know, when something happens, you know, when you, when I bag fish, I try to sex them as best as I can, but sometimes I get fooled. Sometimes, or I just make a mistake. and that's my fault I'm gonna make it right for you the customer so most people just say ah I don't waste the shipping on one fish just I'll order again and, and add it to me add it to my order and what I do is I add that and you know a couple extra fish from each strain they they bought for their their issue so all right let's move down to the middle room we got the longfin chocolate plecos uh, growing those out. Hopefully we get at least one boy and one girl and we can uh, start breeding these guys because they are spectacular. And then the uh, red mosaic Dumbo ears. I'm kind of surprised I don't see babies, but you know, they weren't getting fed as much. So we're going to power feed these guys and hopefully get some babies going. The high fin red tuck sword tails. Uh, lots of babies in here. Lots of um, juveniles as well and sub adults or young adults now I don't know if you remember but I did have a big tub and I put a trio of these outside and uh, after about a week all three of them were gone so uh, that's what happened with that tub I didn't really film much of that tub before they were gone so uh, that's what happened that project was a complete fail you can see there's one nice um, male back there and then a bunch of really nice females. And then there's this female that's just black and gray and not so nice, but cool hyphen. All right, these are the Jade Head Cobras um, and the Platties. If you remember, I found uh, a very, very, I found a ton of these fry, you know, like this in there. And uh, when I did some investigating, I found a Mickey Mouse platy in there. And uh, she had dropped literally a hundred fry. And just too much of a pain in the hiney to, to catch while they're so small. So I'm just gonna let them grow up. And uh, as I can, I'm gonna start pulling them out. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. They might become uh, food for Han and Leia. 
Um, cause I'm not really into platies anymore. So we'll see. Uh, you know, if you're interested in all these fry, make me an offer. Keep in mind, I'm going to have to spend lots of time trying to capture them, trying to net them out of this tank. Um, basically what I would have to do is take everything out of the tank, make sure there's no fry stuck in the weeds, then start pulling out either the guppies or the platies separate them and then box them out so just keep that in mind if when you make your offer all right there's a trio i don't really know it's true but there's three albino bristle nose in here um and there's one right there and also one betta that is for sale um uh if you're interested let me know but uh, these guys I got when they were tiny, like this big, and I've been power feeding them, getting them bigger, and uh, they look great, actually. And so, pretty happy with those. <coughs> Excuse me. I have uh, I have three or four more full adults that are in another tank, and once these guys become big enough, I'll probably put them together. All right, here we have the peppermint platies, pink peppermint platies, and... Uh, uh, some guppies that were left. I, I had guppies in here when I was, um, they were just acclimating. And after about a week or so, I pulled them out, except I left a female in there and she dropped a ton of fry. And now these guys are growing up. These were the American guppies, red, white, and blue American guppies, but these guys have yellow in the tail. I really hate when I buy guppies and they don't breed true. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll call these rainbow tails or something. We'll call them something. <clears throat> and I'll put a little note that they, you know, they don't breed 100% true on the website so people know. And we'll see what happens. But the pink panda platies, uh, waiting for those to grow up. And uh, then I'm going to put them on as a package deal on the website because, again, really not into the platies. So I did see one with a bent spine. I'm going to have to cull that and uh, feed it to hand. It'll be a nice tasty treat. All right, here we have some red cobra guppies. Oh, and I see fry. Can you see the fry back there? Uh, this is one of my newest methods of spawning. Oh, also there's little baby uh, super red bristle nose. You can see I dropped some um, Sarah wood chips in there, catfish chips in there last night uh, for them to eat. And uh, I dropped them in all the pleco tanks, all but this tank, and I think this tank, they're gone, but um, yeah, because those guys get hungry. Anyway, another method I have for breeding is, I have these, these tanks down here with colony breeding, but um, when there's so many adults, there's a good chance that the, some fry are gonna get eaten. So uh, what I have done is I put three females in here with my nicest male, and uh, virgin females, at least <clears throat> as best as I could tell. With the nicest male, uh, these were red cobra guppies. And I let that, you know, happen for a couple days, then I pull the male out. And then typically the females, a little bit more comfortable to drop the fryer without the male chasing them around. And you can see there's, I don't know, 15 or 20 over there. There's some in the weeds over there. I don't know if it's focusing enough for you to see, but there's quite a few fry in here. So now we will power feed this tank and uh, get those guys to grow. The other thing I probably will do is switch out this box filter for a sponge filter. The plecos will like to eat off the sponge filter as well as the fry. Uh, same thing going on here. There are these um, baby plecos in here. And there's also a really pregnant female guppy I don't know where she is, but you can see the plecos on the wall. She's hiding. Uh, the last time I went to find a female guppy that was hiding, she was dropping fries. So we're just going to leave her alone. Uh, you can see I have a sponge filter in here. There's no air to it, but bacteria, beneficial bacteria, is still colonized in that sponge. It probably was a fully cycled filter when I put it in here. And what I'll do is I'll probably just swap these two from here to here. I'll just add the air from there to here, boom. And then this one I'll probably clean out and put in another tank ready to go. Let's move our drip and pour. Here are the males of the red magenta cobras or red magenta mosaics. And uh, you can see there's some different shades. There's a really, you know, uh, purple mosaic. And then there's some other more uh, red cobra looking ones, but 
These guys are great. Uh, again, what I do is I pulled all the males out of this tank down here, which we'll show you in a minute, and uh, put them in here to grow up. The females and the males will grow up uh, a little bigger if you separate them due to hormones are released to the water. But you can see there's some fry that I must have caught. I gotta, I gotta grab those out before they become females and uh, get harassed to death, so. This is a fail tank, folks. This is uh, blue and red grass guppies that I got from eBay back in, I don't know if it was December or January, and they were shipped in the cold. They were shipped on a Saturday. I got them on Monday in great condition. But um, they've only dropped females. Yep, all these are females. And I have a heater in the tank, though the water does feel a little cold. It's 76 degrees in the fish room, which means the water's probably close to that, 75 maybe. That should be warm enough to have boys spawn as well. Um, but in my opinion and experience, temperature influences the uh, sex of the guppy fry. And I believe, <clears throat> and I don't know that there's no scientific proof to this, but I believe you can help uh, change the sex to male with warmer water. Again, no scientific proof there. That's just me breeding guppies for a couple years. Uh, you can see there's a pleco cave in there. I do need to buy some more. There's some uh, calico bristle nose in here. I think there's three of them. Let's see if we can get those to breed. This tank also has a pleco cave. This is the tank with the adult albino bristle nose. We got some pretty cool snails too. You can see that one on the wall over there and some nice ones like in the wood right there. But uh, this one also has an extra filter that's not attached to anything. So I can pull that one out. You can see fry right near it, probably waiting to snack. These were the American, um, <clears throat> American koi guppies that I got. Um, and they just, they don't breed true. They breed like these. So the purple magentas, and that's what I sell them as. And it's weird because, I don't know if I can even say this, but the purple magentas breed true as purple magentas. You can see a couple different uh, uh, fry in there. Now that one's a little light, but still cool. I'll probably take that one and put it in the mutt tank. Um, actually, I saw one with a pintail, so that's kind of cool knowing that that trait is there, right there. Uh, actually, a lower sword tail. So again, these guys didn't breed true at first, but their spawns are breeding pretty true. I mean, that one is spectacular. Look at it. I mean, I don't, I don't have, I don't claim to have, uh, I don't, nah, nothing. Just babbling. Black Moscow guppy colony grown quite well. I have separated most of the adult males to another tank. I will have to come through here and separate the males that I can definitely 100% sex out in here and remove them, let the females grow up. These guys, very prolific. They're on the website. Um, they're the only one on the website that is listed as a trio. And I may, I may, uh, <clears throat> I may do that for all the strains I have. List pairs and trios and see how that goes. So uh, you can see a couple different generations of fry because there's quite a few pregnant females. So Mike's mutts. This tank is, you know, got all the algae on the the hard green algae. But you can see different. Different strains have created beautiful, beautiful guppies. Again, if you're not looking to breed true guppies, you just want some really good looking guppies in your tank, this is for you. Uh, the price, very inexpensive, five for uh, $20, which is four hours a piece. You know you're getting healthy, uh, hopefully disease-free guppies uh, that are gonna live and be very hardy and very prolific. If you have a request, if you order Mike's Mutts and you want, you know, ah, I like, I really like red ones, or I really like blue ones, I will try to help you out. I will try to find those for you. If not, I just scoop five, uh, typically three males, two females. Guys, these are the green cobras. Again, I'm having a problem with males in here. Um, I have recently added a heater, actually not recently, about a month ago. And uh, we are getting some male production, but not nearly enough uh, for what I need, so gotta figure these out. I am also going to buy some more stock to add to these because they are not breeding true, so I want them to breed true, as true as possible at least. These are baby bristlenose plecos in here. A uh, couple different sizes. They've gotten a lot bigger since I left. Um, 
and some really gorgeous guppies that were given to me that uh, as soon as I breed enough, I probably will start selling on the website. So, all right, let's move down low. I'm just gonna grab the chair because I'm a fat guy that likes to sit down. So, you guys know the story about this tank. It looks pretty empty. However, there's seven or eight baby platies in there. I had sold all my platies to uh, a customer and uh, he's a local guy. I think he's a firefighter. And uh, when I cleaned the tank out, I thought I got all the guppies, all the uh, platies for him. But a couple days later when everything settled and I was looking in the tank, there were itty bitty tiny fry. I mean like, like a third of that size, tiny. Anyway, I put them in a bucket and uh, I fed the bucket once a week or something. Seriously, I just vacuumed everything out, used the vacuum to vacuum the fry out, and uh, boom, that was that. And uh, I called him and said, or I, I messaged him and said, hey, uh, I have some of these plies if you want them. And we couldn't meet up before I left for Japan, so we'll hook up and uh, I'll just give them to him because uh, I told him I was gonna sell him everything I had. And these guys were left in the tank, so. All right, yellow cobras, lots of fry, lots of growing to do. Um, you know, I don't know if you know, but guppies pretty much come with two, females come with two body colors, either gold or gray, and there's both in here. Gold-bodied yellow cobras and gray-bodied yellow cobras. So it's kind of interesting. They produce slightly different uh, male offspring. Some a little bit more cobra-y, more metallic-y, you know, some just more yellow. <clears throat> but uh, these guys are on the website and for sale. All right, these are the red, white, and blue guppies. And unfortunately, I see fry, but I thought there were bigger fry in here, you know, like sub-adults almost. There is the female. Either I woke her and she's giving a fry or she's not doing so well. So I got to do some investigating into this tank. Uh, you know, when you go away for two weeks, you expect things to happen. Something really good happened, which I'm going to show you uh, when I get to the other side of the tank. But yeah, this tank is a mystery for now. So again, I didn't really do a lot of work when I got home yesterday because I was exhausted. Here we have the... Um, Purple, red, purple mosaics. Uh, the males, these are the males. You know, these are the females. They're almost mutt cobras, but they kind of breed. I don't want to say they breed true. They kind of breed um, with those males. That's, that's what they look like. So that's what we sell them as. They are gorgeous, ginormous females. Um, there's a bunch of frying here. Very happy with this. And uh, yeah. Really nothing else to say. Cobra guppy females. Pulled all the males out. Put them in a male guppy tank. A different male guppy tank. We have sort of two uh, colonies of these. We have this colony and this colony. Now, I don't know if you know about genetics. I don't really know about genetics. But cobra guppies, if you have a red cobra, unless you are very diligent with culling, eventually you'll get greens. If you have green cobras and you're not super diligent, you'll definitely get reds. Red is the dominant color. So I just call them cobra females. These mostly had red in the tail. These mostly had green in the tail. And uh, yeah, that's how that works. So there's fry in both. Um, there's a little bit more fry in this tank, I think, because there's less adults, maybe more hiding spots. Ah, oh, this one looks like there's a lot of hiding spots, but. Uh, this isn't typically a breeding setup. There's way too many females in here. That's why I have this tank with just three females and you can see there's fry in there. So waiting for those to grow up. Empty tank. This actually is just a placeholder. I need to take this tank out. It has to be drilled anyway, but I'll put a cleaner, excuse me, tank in there. We've got a bunch of empty tanks in Michael's fish room. Now that I'm home, I'm going to certainly be looking for some more stock. Uh, I do want to contact some of my uh, YouTube friends, see if we, I can't buy some fish from them. And of course, make an unboxing video. Here's another male guppy tank. We have black Moscows and red cobras growing out in here. Look how nice those guys are. 
There's also some jade heads that I popped in here, jade head cobras that I popped in here. Um, just grow out. Guppy tank, I think just a, uh, oh, I think this is the other purple, let me read it. Purple mosaic dumbbellware sulfur head. I think I dropped a female in here uh, because someone said, hey, those quarries are gonna eat your guppy fry, which I didn't realize. So, no frying here though. Now that I'm home again, we're gonna start power feeding, seeing what's going on. Here we have the uh, the main colony of the black panda guppies. Uh, there's fry, there's juveniles, there's adults. These are for sale on the website. And the most popular fish I have to sell. The story about these is I got the original stock from Corey at Aquarium Co-op just before he stopped selling guppies online. And I don't know if that makes them more valuable to people that they came from Corey or not, but I don't really care, I sell them. I have added stock from another breeder just to, uh, I had a problem where I wasn't getting any females. So I bought females from him because he has a ton of females, not enough males. So this tank is an empty tank. Got to clean it out and uh, stock it up. All right, fishy folks. I know you're waiting for the special amazing surprise and uh, I'll show it to you soon. Here are the red dragon guppies. These are the ones with the really nice big black dorsal fins. And uh, we have some baby bristle nose plecos in there, some albinos, just chilling. And uh, these guys, these guppies are fantastic. Look how nice the females look. Um, this week I'll be putting them on the website. I know I've said that before, but I don't wanna put them on the website before I went to Japan. But this week I'll be putting them on the website, probably have a sale or something. So be ready. Be ready. These are uh, albino quarries and, oh no, there is there is another jacked up female back there. Look at her. I don't know what that female in the tank behind me is, but look how jacked up her back is. I am not happy with these guppies. Yeah, not happy. All right, in here we have some uh, green dragon babies. Not babies, but juveniles. Um, plecos, of course, they're all hiding. And there is these glass belly guppies. I got these at an auction. Karen Haas was the original breeder. Karen is spectacular. She's into a lot of cares fish. And her husband, Alan, is one of my favorite people in the world because he's so funny and honest. And he's British. So, oh, there's a green dragon baby. Hey. These guys didn't breed for me for the longest time, and now I've, they've dropped at least three different spawns. You can see tiny, tiny ones. Those are probably a day or two old. And then uh, there's some other ones that are a couple weeks old and some other ones that's maybe a month old. So pretty happy with that. All right, while we're down low in the chair, we'll check out Han and Leia's tank. There's Han growing nicely, just as an idea. He's almost as big as my hand. You can see there. And Leia is in her cave. She's quite shy. Again, I'm assuming Leia is a female because she's much smaller, but I don't really know anything about these kind, sexing these kind of fish. And you have Jabba the Hutt, the Pleco, who's almost as big as these plushy Plecos that I got from Super Cichlids in Delaware. Don't forget to check out Lisa and Martin at supercichlids.com, guys. Uh, that's where I get most of my food from that uh, that I use in the fish room. All right, moving on. Goldfish tank. Uh, this tank, I'm gonna be changing. I'm gonna be getting something else. You guys probably can guess what it is for this tank. I gotta get rid of these goldfish. I think I'm gonna give them to a young customer of mine who lives in New Jersey. He's got a, a pond, a couple ponds in his garage and a bunch of tanks and uh, He's a great young man, great fish keeper. His mom is great, and uh, you know who you are. There's also a uh, L333 King Tiger Pleco in here, probably hiding in that wood. I did check on him yesterday. He's definitely here. All right, now what you've all been waiting for, fishy folks, the special surprise. L144 Pleco babies. Of course, they're all hiding now, but I got home. Oh, there's one on the glass. Let's see if we can focus in on it. Nope. Well, there it is, folks. There. 
before I left, I saw uh, males in two caves, these two caves here, and also a male in one of those caves over there. At least what I thought was a male. I know I have at least one. Look, there's, there's a male chilling right there. There's at least one. There might be two male bristlenose plecos hanging in the cave. And uh, before I left, I, I really hoped I was gonna see babies. And after I left, I wasn't sure if th there were gonna be babies and they were gonna survive based on not feeding. But I came home yesterday and uh, I came down and I saw a ton, there's a ton right there, of L144 blue-eyed lemon plecos fry. So you can see a ton there, not a ton, three or four maybe. Um, but they were all over the glass. They're really quite a lot. So I was quite happy. Of course, <clears throat> they're hiding now. I don't know where they are. Great job filming, guys. But L1, there's one too. L144 Pleco Babies for sale soon at Michael's Fish Room. Look how nice they look. Blue eyes. Not long fin, but kind of a, a cell fin, if you will. All right. Moving on to the last couple tanks, uh, black panda fry, a uh, black panda guppy grow out. This was my second tank. There's also some calico plecos in here. Um, this was my second tank. Another trick that I've told you I do, you know, I'll take a real plump female, drop her in another tank, let her drop fry and let the fry raise up in there. I have pulled most of the fry out of here. There's just a couple females. Uh, what I'm gonna do is drop a male in here and maybe a week or two, let them do their thing, pull that mail out and start the process all over again. Now, Bruce, <clears throat> when I came home and looked at all my tanks, Bruce was lying on his side at the bottom of the tank. And I thought he was dead. And I was pretty annoyed, but I was pretty tired. I said, I'll take care of it tomorrow. Later last night, I came downstairs to uh, just double check on something. I think I was actually doing laundry and I just walked in the fish room and Bruce was just looking at me like that. Hey, dude. Yeah, we're going to fatten you up. You're a little skinny, buddy. We're going to fatten you up. You're going to look like me. I'm going to start feeding you bacon. All right, fishy folks. That's it for the tour. <clears throat> Hope you enjoyed it. I know it's quite a long one. Hope you stayed to the end for the special news. And uh, don't forget to check out michaelsfishroom.com. Shipping will resume on Monday. I have six orders to go out. And I just realized I need to find some bags somewhere. So... Hopefully I'll be able to find them today. I got some stuff to do. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it to buy bags. If not, they'll go out on Tuesday. All right, fishy folks, michaelsfishing.com. See ya. Uh, the reason I didn't say any purples in the other tank, these are the purple Moscows, males. But they're not purple Moscows. I'm talking on my butt. Good morning. Wow. <clears throat> Let's do that again. Hi, fishy folks, and happy Sunday fun day to you. Today, I'm back from Japan. If you guys don't know, I was in Japan for 14 days for business, and uh, I had one of my sons uh, come down and feed my fish, I think, four times while I was gone. So, I think... Uh, I want to, I don't know what I want to do. Hi, fishy folks, and happy Sunday fun day to you. Today, I'm back from Japan. 14-hour flight. Who cares? <laughs>